Hey, what is up guys? Gitaro here. Welcome back to another Brave 9 video. Okay, so a couple of things to cover in this particular video. Hopefully I can squeeze everything in here. Alright, number one, we're going to talk about the packages. Alright, so besides the, the summer dungeon that we have, what else do we have? So we have one package right here. This is a Summer Lady Angelica costume package. So this package has the Summer Lady costume for Angelica herself. You get 10 premium scrolls, you get 1 million gold, you get 10,000 mystic dust. Now, in my opinion, this is not worth it because usually costumes on their own is only worth 1,200 diamonds, right? So this package, this costume on her own, um, if you add another 800 diamonds, I don't think any of these are worth 800 diamonds. So in my opinion, you should only try to get this costume if you really really want her but based on my uh, checking in the costume shop she wasn't available right there you have to only buy her from the package i'm not entirely sure if is it because this current package is available so yeah do keep that in mind if you cannot get this costume and this costume is a package exclusive then sure it's it may be worth this amount but in most regular other costumes like the alienus one you know that they did before this last week that one was definitely not worth it. Alright, so we're gonna scrape that off. Berries, these are super not worth it. Please do not buy any of these berries. I saw somebody commented, oh, I already buy all the berries. Like, seriously, it's not worth it. Unless, unless you are a paying player, unless you are a whale, you have plenty of diamonds. Any normal free-to-play player should not buy this at all. I will explain to you guys why shortly. These berries are so easy to farm, it's just not worth any diamonds. Even if this was 10 diamonds, I don't think it's worth it. And the fact that it's 50 diamonds, 5 diamonds per berry. No, do not buy this. Please avoid buying this if you are a free to play. Alright, so if you are a whale, you have plenty of money to spare, I won't stop you. Alright, so but there are plenty of other things that you should be spending. Like the Angelica costume right there is definitely much more worth it than this one. Alright, so next we have the Mamone costume, like you can see right here. This is only available in real cash. You can only purchase the Mamone costume with real money, which is such a bummer. So unfortunately, yes. Um, if you have the money, sure, go for it, right? It's not something that you can buy with diamonds. Now, this on the other hand is a very interesting one. This is probably the best package I've ever seen in my life. Like... I, in a long while, like I've never seen a package that has this good of a value in it. This should be your priority to purchase, like literally. No matter how much diamonds you have, you have to save them for this. Like this one is just, in the value is insane. Like look at this, the package too. Legend scroll times 30. Each 10 pulls equates to about 900 diamonds, right? So 3 is like 2700 diamonds. Uh, this is like not even remotely close to 2700 diamonds. And you are getting so much more. You're getting 10,000 soul pieces, 1,500 horseshoes, 100 arena swords, and honor points as well. Insane. Insane value right here. Same goes for package 1. Alright, 30 premium scrolls, 6,000 uh, of those. Like premium scrolls usually are worth 600 diamonds. So times 3, that's 1,800. Yes, you are sacrificing mileage. I know some players are still going to say, oh, I still prefer mileage. Sure, just because you prefer mileage doesn't mean that this is a bad uh, package overall. This is like very good. The value here is very good. You can easily calculate right here. You can't really compare with mileage. Like it doesn't really deter the fact that this is a good value package. You are getting a lot of things right here. All right, premium scrolls, soul pieces, horseshoes, a bunch of swords, and honor points. So I would say every single free to play player out there, your priority is to buy this package. All right, you can buy both of these twice. I've already purchased this one time. You can see I have one left. This one has two left. So I will try to buy, um, save up as much diamonds as you can and try to buy until uh, before the time ends. Because you have plenty of time. This package will be here for 30 days, 29 days more, right? You have the a very hard difficulty for the campaign and you have a couple of weeks more events for you to be able to farm up the diamonds. So I would say this is definitely a must. Now, if you can only buy one, which one should you buy? I would say priority should be the Legend Scrolls one, obviously. But yeah. I would say buy both. This is a very good deal. Alright, so this one again is another package that is decent value, but I would say why not get the Mamone costume if you have cash because it's about the same price. I would get the Mamone costume over this particular package, but I can see this 
is much enticing because it has plenty of scrolls, 50 scrolls in total, 30 legend, 20 premium, but it doesn't have the costume, right? So I would say the costume one is much more worth. If I have to choose between this and the other one, the one, the Mamone costumes one, I would go for that for sure. Okay, so now let's talk about a couple of things. Number one, we're going to talk about uh, Helga. All right, Helga's rebalancing ETC. Is Helga still worth it? All right, so we're going to ju just jump straight into it. A lot of players have been asking me, Helga, worth it? Yes, no. So what is the biggest nerf in, Hel in my opinion in Helga? This skill is still the same at plus 15. For this particular skill, it still gives buffs. 8 turns for 100% defense, 8 turns for debuff immunity. Alright, so what has changed for Helga? Number 1 is the curse. Alright, instead of 10 turns previously, now it's reduced to 8 turns. And the biggest change is the buff prohibition. Before this, she has 16 turns of buff prohibition, right? So right now, that is literally reduced to 8 turns. Pretty crazy, pretty insane stuff for sure. Alright, so one more thing is this particular awakening skill right here. Before this, if I'm not mistaken, it was 200%, so now it's reduced to 150%. I could be wrong, but I think it's about 200%. So they did reduce the counter a little bit. So if you look at it, optimal skill level wise, right at plus 12, you already get all of these 8 turns, 6 turns debuff immunity though. And then at this one, the curse is 8 turns, but buff prohibition is 6 turns. So that is at plus 12. I would say plus 12 is probably her new optimal skill level if you can't get her to plus 15. The next one will be plus 15 where you can get her buff prohibition to 8 turns. Now a lot of players have been telling me, okay, I want to transfer Helga away. What should I build right now? Right now, if you are looking to build a new unit, it's either going to be Eliania or Bin. Like the only unit that makes sense is either one of these two. If you're not going to build uh, Alec and Celia that is. If you already have both of those, right, you might want to wait for a bit. There's not, no rush. Don't rush it. I don't know why players like to rush it. Like, oh, I could compensate right now. Let's do it right now, today. I need to do it today. Like, there's no need to rush. Just calm down. Just calm down, all right? I'm not sure why a lot of players, they don't think properly first. Like, what they want, they just change it and regret later. Just take it easy, all right? It's not going anywhere. So you can compensate Helga. And you should actually think carefully as well because... I can show you, once you refund Helga, right, you get all these skill books back. Same goes for the companions, all right? So I do have two Helga companion. So one at level five, one at level one, right? So uh, let me just show it to you guys how, how it's executed. So we have to stop accompanying first. Okay, so how this works is you are exchanging the level five companion, if you have a level five, to another level five companion. So you can only do this once. So once I do this, I cannot do it anymore. Alright, so make sure you guys think carefully. So for example, some of you might already have two Eliana companions. So if you are building an Eliana, now you're exchanging for a five, right? Then you have two more in your inventory that will go to waste. So in that case, you are not making the best out of your value. So make sure you guys think carefully what you really need, what you really want. Alright, so Eliana and Bane is basically the two best units that you can get right now depending on what you're looking for. You want a warrior that has distorted damage or you want a defender that can taunt with distorted damage and debuff immunity. So think carefully, all right? So in my opinion, I would say Helga is still really, really strong and really good in the current PvE, all right? So if you're not talking about PvP, outside of PvP, Helga is still really strong. She can still be used in a lot of stages on the campaign, a lot of the evil castle stages, you sort of need her in a lot of strategies. And same goes for Guild Wars, alright, if you play Guild Wars a lot, okay, so she's sort of going to be uh, a very crucial component, a very crucial unit right there. And undeniably, even in underground arena or tournaments, she's going to make an impact. Her value is going to significantly drop in mostly PvP. And I can see with Helga's uh, nerf, alright, because this is a pretty huge nerf right here. It turns at plus 15, right? So that's going to significantly bring back a lot of units into the meta. I have a feeling Ventana is going to climb back a little bit. Maybe Rafitia will climb back a little bit because now she makes much more sense to use. Round 2, she can still buff. She won't get, uh, your team will not get buff prohibited ETC. So yeah, a lot of strategies can actually 
you know, come back to life, which I'm really excited to see. Overall, sure, PvP is not going to be used much, but in PvE, I would say Helga is still one of the best, strongest unit out there. All right, this skill alone is why you want to use her on PvP most of the time. Well, you still use her for this skill sometimes, all right, but you don't need 16 turns. In most cases, you want to prevent the enemy for ta from taunting, all right, if you don't have grace or things like that, you can actually use her. She buffs, prohibits them, and also gives your allies 100% stats of buffs, which is insanely a lot, and you can definitely use her a lot. So unless you have already tackled all the PvE contents like Evil Castle, Underground Evil Castle, all right, ETC, so I'm going to make another guide regarding the Evil Castle, sure. This floor, 66 uh, to 70, you definitely have a lot of, you can actually make a lot of usage out of her, which is crazy. So make sure you guys take advantage of Helga before you transfer her skills away. Alright, don't be trigger happy. Don't just do it, you know, without thinking. Do you really need Eliana and Bane right now? Which one is your priority? Are you going to like leave out your PvE and not care about them at all? If that's the case, then sure. Go and build your Bane, go and exchange for your Elena, and focus on PvP. Alright, so even in the campaign stages, I did upload a video yesterday, alright? You can see Helga is used there, and in some stages, it doesn't affect that much, and Helga can still be used. So if you guys have not tackled the harder stages of the campaign and the evil castle, you might want to wait first, alright? You might want to abuse her first, before you proceed to exchange her skills. Okay, so let's talk about the event dungeon and how you should approach this. So right now, in the current event dungeon, you can farm multiple stages and you should always farm the event dungeon instead of buying berries with diamonds. So once you farm the berries, all right, you can exchange right here. So you get Aqua, which is a companion. You get Sui, 45 of her shards. You can exchange once uh 15 times you can see right here one out of 15 so you can uh, basically fuse her once you have enough of her shards so let's say if i click exchange then right so you can see confirm boom so now it choose randomly chose 10 for me to combine which is interesting so if you look carefully right here once you complete all of this box apparently you can reset gift box so i'm not sure how many times you can farm this and the event will last for 29 days so you have plenty of time to farm for the event and the event stages is pretty uh, easy as well okay so let me show you the strategy that I use so I'm just gonna finish now so we got about 187 berries bunch of gold some return horseshoes all right so here's the thing so you get three stages stage one stage two stage three okay so based on what I noticed every single stage will give you a single berry but the difference between stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3, it seems to be the goal. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my strat, how I did it in 4 turns. So hopefully you guys can be more efficient as well. If you can do it in 4 turns, so this is the strat I use for 4 turns. Notice I'm still using Helga. So the boss comes in, hits your Seto, and then we have Joseph, plus 9, gonna whack the first guy, and then Koret jump in later. Alright, so this is the strat. Pretty straightforward. Alright, the boss dies. Helga gives buffs to Joseph, or else Joseph wouldn't be able to do it. And we have Korat going in. So that's how you do it in 4 turns. So yeah, you get more gold on this stage compared to the, the first stage. So yeah, if you don't care about the gold at all, right? The difference is quite huge in terms of the horseshoes. If you look, this stage consumes 4 horseshoes. Stage 2 consumes 6, and stage 3 consumes 8. So I'm not sure which is much more efficient. If you only care about berries, obviously stage 1 is the way to go. Uh, if you care about gold as well, then you want to farm stage 3 constantly. And you saw stage 3 can be done in 4 turns. Alright, so for stage 1, okay, you can use this strat right here. So we have Koret going in first. And then uh, Helga die giving her buff. You actually don't really need buff that much. But yeah, you can see, it can be done in around 4 turns as well. So yeah, uh, you can try your own strategy if you want. Obviously, you can replace Korat with something like a Gunter or something that it hits cross tile and is a skip. Lian would work as well. So yes, this one, um, again, in my opinion, I would say if you are farming for the berries, you either want to farm stage 1 or stage 3. I don't think stage 2 makes sense in most cases. So yeah, it's going to depend on which one would you prefer more. 
Remember, the dungeon is going to open every single day following the event dungeon's time. So make sure you guys take note. Alright, if you guys are not aware what time is it for you, just go here and check right here in the event dungeon. Alright, depending on which server you're on, this would be your time. Alright, make sure you check accordingly. And lastly, before we end the video, we have the Brave 9 coupon part 2. Okay, so in case you guys do not know yet, the part 2 coupon, you cannot insert it right here if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so it's right there on your Facebook page. So just remember DJ Max Collect. I think you just go to it right here where the links are. Right, so just click on whichever server you're on. DJ Max Collab. Alright, press on confirm. Okay, so apparently I've already used mine. Uh, I might have collected it earlier already, I'm not entirely sure, but it's 10 premium scrolls if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, you can go and do some pulls with it. Make sure you guys take note of this barrier exchange. Um, it's very important. Oh, I can exchange 100 now. Let's try it out. Confirm, boom. Oh my, we just completed most of it. Exchange 100 more. Can I do that? Okay, like you can see, uh, quite a lot of good stuff right here. Alright, there are some 5 star skill book pieces as well. And I think everyone should try to get as much as they can. So ideally, I think you want to try and get everything before you reset the box. But once you get the main stuff, you can already reset the gift box. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I will talk about Sui and Aqua in the next video. Maybe showcase them in some Novice Arena ETC. As always, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.